Well, congratulations on making it to the Module 6 lab, and here is where you will be showcasing your skills on how to use Feature Turn to create a component with both external outside diameter features as well as internal diameter features in the form of uh, we'll have a, a groove on the outside diameter of the part and we'll also have a bored hole with a step or a counter bore on the inside of the part. First thing that we'll do is open feature cam and we will select a new part from the file menu. So we'll go file, new, and we're going to select turn mill and then we'll click OK. And feature cam or in this case feature turn opens and we're prompted to um, identify the properties of the stock. So our stock shape will be round. The stock outside diameter will be six inches. The stock inside diameter will leave at zero. The stock length will be five inches. The material will be aluminum. We'll select next. And here's where we'll define the material type. Um, and we'll leave that set. Uh, aluminum, a Brunel of 111, and we will click Finish. And from this point, the Z-axis location, we'll set that to zero. And then we will click OK. So now in step three, we're going to create the turned outside diameter feature. So let's begin by creating the lines, uh, the horizontal and the vertical lines that will form the boundary of our feature. And we'll begin by creating the horizontal lines first. And you'll note that the first horizontal line is a half of an inch down from the edge of the part. And the next horizontal line is another half of an inch down from that line. And let's go ahead while we're at it, we'll create the horizontal line that, that will define the edge of the part. And now we can switch to our vertical line. And looking at the drawing, the first vertical line will be one inch from the right side of the part. And these are quarter inch grids again, so four, four grid points is one inch. And we'll do the same thing from the left side of the part. So at this point, we can go ahead and clip the unneeded line. So we'll select clip and begin to clip away the lines that are unnecessary. So now I have the geometry for the curve that will form the groove and the turned feature on the outside of the on the outside diameter of the part with the exception of just a couple of minor features that need to be added in this case a radius in this bottom right hand corner and bottom left hand corner and a small chamfer 0.125 inch chamfer that will be on these uh, two corners the two internal corners here so let's begin by creating the radiuses so we'll call it a corner fillet and looking at the drawing, it's a 0.25 inch radius, and it looks like that's what our default is already set at. So we'll create a radius there and there. And now we need to create a chamfer on the corners. And our chamfer will be 0.125 by 0.125. We'll set those down here in the bottom left. And create that chamfer there and we'll create another chamfer there. So now at this point what we need to do is we need to chain these line segments into a single curve and this will again be an open curve and we will pick the pieces of our curve selecting one, this is the chamfer, the vertical line and it's a little difficult to see I'm going to zoom in a little bit on that the radius, the horizontal line in the bottom, the radius again, the chamfer, and the final segment. And when we're done, we will call this curve one and we'll create it. So now we can go ahead and move on to the next step by creating the geometry that will form the board hole. And in looking at where we're at, uh, it looks like we need to create a horizontal, or I'm sorry, a vertical line one inch from the right hand side of the part and then we'll need to create 
two horizontal lines. The first horizontal line will be one inch from the outside diameter uh, turned surface. So we'll create that line. And the next horizontal line will be a half of an inch below that. So at this point, we can begin to trim or clip the unneeded lines. And there we are. So we have uh, the basic contour. Uh, and again, we need to add, in this case here, just a, uh, an eighth inch chamfer in the, in, the, uh, in the corner that you see right here. So we'll go ahead and select on chamfer. And our dimensions are still the same, 0.125 and we'll create that chamfer like so. And at this point, we can chain the curve, selecting the first line, second, the chamfer, the final horizontal, and we'll call this curve two and we'll create it. And we are finished creating the curve or chaining the curve that will form the inside diameter of our part. So moving on to the next step, uh, we're going to use the feature wizard and we're going to create both the turned and the board features from the curves that we previously created. So let's switch to the view menu and we will select principal view isometric. And at this point, it's very similar to the prior example that we did in video number three. So we're going to create a feature. In this case here, it's a turned feature. We'll select Next, and we're going to be doing a turning operation on the outside diameter. It looks like a groove, but note that there's also some material that's removed from the part. So we'll just call this a straight turning operation. We'll leave that set. And we're going to select Curve 1. It's very important. You'll see Curve 1 highlights in red. We'll select Next. You'll see some of the 3D uh, lines or the wireframe of our... Uh, outside of our part being defined. We'll select Next again, leave all the defaults set, hit Next. Okay, now our tool set. And you'll see that the, the tool that's set here is an 80 degree carbide uh, cutting tool. And we'll select Next. Selecting for our finish operation, we'll leave that the same. And then finally click on Finish. Okay, so We'll select OK, and now we'll hit Features again. We're going to create another turning feature. We're going to be creating a board hole. We'll select Next. We'll be defining our board hole from curve number two. We'll select Next. You'll see the feature, the wireframe for the feature. Select Next again. Um, we're boring in this case here. We're using a roughing pass, a finishing pass, and Next again. And finally, next one more time, and here's our boring tool. We'll cycle through the defaults on our boring finishing, uh, roughing and finishing tools. And we'll select Finish and hit OK. And we are done, with the exception of running the simulation for the part. So we'll click on the 3D simulation, and we'll run our part. And you'll see here's our turning operations being performed with our 80 degree cutting tool. We'll let it cycle through these passes. And you'll note that the part does not quite look the way that it should. Okay, so at this point, we need to make some changes to our tooling setup in order to allow us to be able to cut the geometry of this outside diameter the way that it's intended to be cut. So let's go ahead and look and see what the tooling setup is and what our warnings are. And we'll do that by looking at the results window. And when we open the results window, you'll note that there are two warning tags on both of our passes, one being the roughing pass and the other being the finishing pass for the outside diameter. And if I hover over the warning tags, feature turn tells me that in this case here, it gives me a warning, undercut detected, that it's unable to completely rough uh, the feature with this tool. 
And this is this is good because feature cam or feature turn in this case here machines as much material as possible without causing a crash. So we need to find out where the problem is and correct it. So let's double click on our roughing pass and take a look and see what we have for our tools. Now note that this 80 degree diamond uh, tool is the reason why we're unable to machine the part completely. So what we need to do is switch this 80 degree diamond tool to a smaller tool with a smaller profile, like the 35 degree diamond. And when we do that, we get the 35 degree diamond uh, assortment of tools that open here at the uh, bottom left. So we'll go ahead and select the, uh, the turning tool for the 35 degree diamond. And here's the profile for it. Much narrower, narrower tool, able to get into some tighter areas. And we'll apply the use of the 35 degree diamond to the roughing pass. We'll also apply it to the finishing, uh, which by default is already applied. So that's good. So let's hit OK. And we'll machine this uh, again. So we hit play. Wow, it looks like our part uh, is the way it needs to be. However, we're still getting a couple of warning tags here. So let's look, and there's obviously still some undercutting that's going on, although I can't see it from this angle. So we'll switch our view to the top view. Ah, and now we can see that this right hand shoulder is not being completely machined. And I can tell you that's primarily due to the orientation of our tool. Note that the tool is a left handed turning tool. So it has no problems machining the shoulder on the left side, but a left-handed turning tool just can't machine uh, the shoulder that's on the right. So what we'll need to do is correct the situation by adding an additional roughing and finishing pass uh, to machine this external feature with a right-handed cutting tool. So let's do that. So let's switch back to our uh, or eject the simulation to bring back our geometry. And what we're going to do is we're going to add in another feature. And we'll do that by selecting the steps menu, feature. Again, we'll be turning. We're turning an outside diameter from a curve. We're going to use, we're going to use curve one. We'll click next. You'll see that the outside diameter is selected. We'll hit next. Hit next again. You'll see that this is our tool that's been selected as an 80 degree angle. We'll go ahead and uh, search for another tool. And I want to use the 35 degree diamond for this particular operation as well. Use a back turning setup. We'll hit next. Keep all the other defaults set the same. We'll use the same tool for our finishing pass keeping the defaults the same, and then we'll hit finish. And now we should be prepared and we should have, going to the part view, you'll see that we have uh, all of our processes. We've got turn one, bore one, and then turn two, which will be that final pass to catch this shoulder here on the right hand side. Now you'll note that when we run the simulation, we're also getting an error on our second turning pass that, uh, that we built in to clean up this right hand shoulder. And so we need to find out what that problem is. So let's click on turn two, we'll double click, and we'll go to the strategy. And you'll see that the problem is in my operations area, that although I have my tool set up properly, you'll see that the icon here indicates that my feed direction is in the negative direct is in the negative direction, I need to change that to positive for both my roughing pass and my finishing pass. And you'll note that when I do that, the orientation of my illustration changes to match the type of machining operation that I need this particular uh, feature um, to be. So we'll click apply and then we'll hit OK. And at this point, all of my errors have cleared out on the operations list, which tells me that most likely this is going to be a successful machining operation. So I'm going to keep it uh, by default selected to the top view and we're going to select 3D solid and we'll select play on the simulation toolbar and you can see that now the turned feature uh, is displayed as it should be and uh, I can use the trackball to 
look at the internal features as well. And everything on this part looks to be correct. So at this point, we can review the part and take a look. And all of the features are machined uh, the way that they're supposed to be machined. Um, I can even zoom in and just clarify that my radiuses or radii are exactly where they need to be. I'm getting my chamfers are properly positioned, uh, both externally and internally. And everything in this particular part looks good. So at this point, follow the instructions in step nine of the lab to save the part file and turn it into your instructor when complete. Mm -hmm.